Dan the Wheelman here, and with me today is this. This is the 2022 Volkswagen Taos, or Taos, or Taze. It's spelled T-A-O-S, pronounce it however you want to pronounce it. All you have to know is in this configuration, it is a all-wheel drive compact or subcompact crossover. It's got turbocharged power, seating for five, and some surprisingly big shoes to fill. So let's take a drive today and see how well it fills those shoes. So in the Vancouver Canadians baseball hat today, because it's really the only piece of kind of Canadiana headwear I own. I think about Team Canada toque somewhere, but toques don't look so good on camera, so baseball hat it is. And I'm wearing this day because as of today, which is February 2nd, 2022, making this 2-2-22, I guess, the Team Canada men's national soccer team, or MNT for those in the know, I'm told, has just finished beating both Team USA and Honduras, and it begins tomorrow against El Salvador, as they sit atop their qualifying group, the CONCACAF qualifying group for the World Cup of Soccer taking place later this year in Qatar. They've got a couple of games left against some stronger opponents, some weaker opponents, but their chances are really good to make the World Cup for the first time since 1986. It's a great opportunity for this great country of ours. And despite what some of my countrymen are saying these days, this is a great country in which we live. Make no mistake about it. Great chance for this great country of ours to really showcase themselves on the world stage. So go MNT, go. So this is the 2022 Volkswagen Tau, whatever. So named for a town in New Mexico where, as the story goes, there used to be this like kind of Volkswagen whisperer type mechanic, this cultish mechanic that was great at working on VWs used to have a shop there. So Taos it is. And it comes at an interesting time for VW. Because speaking of old VWs, one of the oldest, most long lasting nameplates at the company, the Golf, was recently pretty much canceled. Uh, yes, there's still the Golf GTI and Golf R, but those are kind of like Halo cars, especially the Golf R. But the bread and butter Golf and Golf Sport Wagon, those are no more. Those were much loved vehicles, and I suspect VW knows there'll be a few noses bent out of shape that those are now gone. So they're coming out with something like the Taos, which is a compact or subcompact crossover, part of a very popular car segment in the world today. So they're coming with that to hopefully take up some of the slack left by the Gulfs. It also comes at a time when they recently pretty drastically changed the Tiguan small crossover. It used to be basically a Golf on stilts. Now it's a three-row you know, SUV crossover thing. And while there still is a shorter Tiguan in other markets, we don't get one here. So again, here's the Taos come along and say, yes, no more Golfs, no more Golf Sport Wagon, but I'm a similar size to those, especially the Golf Sport Wagon, similar size to the old Tiguan, which you loved. Give me a shot. And so here we are in the 2022 Volkswagen Taos instantly recognizable as a VW, perhaps a little too recognizable. These climate controls, for example, are the same climate controls you've seen in VWs for a long time, but they uh, do make use of traditional buttons and dials. I much prefer that to a touch panel interface. I just find traditional buttons a lot easier to use when uh, traditional hard buttons a lot easier to use when driving. Uh, pretty good infotainment system. This is an eight inch screen standard is 6.5, which is a little bit small, especially when you consider some of the, comp what the competition is offering like the Kia Seltos, for example. 
Um, also, these fonts are fonts you've seen in VWs for a long time. The radio select, very similar to what we see in VWs for a long time. Oh, and as you saw there, in order to turn the volume down, I had to turn the dial all the way because if I press the button off, the turn off button, it turns the whole thing off, the whole shebang. And there's no mute button anywhere, which is kind of annoying. And it's also kind of annoying because this knob, when you turn it, the middle uh, volume logo turns with the knob, which kind of drives me nuts. Usually the manufacturers put a bezel around the volume logo. It's just kind of one of those weird things. Seems a little bit almost unfinished to me. Um, but I do have wireless CarPlay in here uh, and wireless charging, which is great. Uh, digital gauge cluster, which can be set to like display your whole navigation screen, which is kind of cool. Beats by Dre Audio instead of Fender, which is what VWs used to use almost exclusively. Do with that what you will. Heated front seats, two USB-C ports, no heated rear seats. Doesn't bother me too much. I feel like heated uh, rear seats in vehicle, small vehicles like this are used mainly for kids in car seats. They don't care that much about heated seats. So if you could save a few bucks by not including them, then so be it. But I do have them up here. I've got leather seats. I've got... Um, flat bottom steering wheel is a nice touch it doesn't bump into your thighs when you turn it i like the way they divided the dash this nice gray kind of leather insert here really cool um backup cam is pretty clear but there's no 360 degree view on there which is a bit annoying but doesn't really annoy me that much it's a pretty small vehicle pretty easy to park which noisy more is i don't have tilt down wing mirrors uh so i find that to be a really uh, when you activate reverse to be a really helpful feature so you don't ding your rims on the curb especially these big low profile 19 inch wheels that i've got on here so instead i have to tilt down myself by using another vw staple the mirror adjust knob which is this kind of like joysticky thing which feels kind of cheap in my opinion i'd rather more kind of a button setup but that's a bit of a nitpick i think otherwise it's comfortable up here it's airy thanks in no small part to this giant sunroof which improves the front seat experience and i uh, expect would improve the rear seat experience as well which we'll check out in just a minute so it's a comfortable place to sit easy to see out of the back windows go almost all the way down when you when you want them to which i kind of like i don't like windows that only fold halfway yes i guess that's good for safety some would argue but if you have your kids properly strapped in uh, i think you'll be okay um so i'd rather have the windows come all the way down the drive mode system is interesting i just want to touch briefly on that the only way to individually adjust stuff like your like your powertrain is through if you're in normal mode of the dial here if you activate any of the off-road modes this one here or the snow mode for example you can't individually adjust powertrain stuff so just keep that in mind otherwise this is a nice place to sit up here that's for sure let's have a look at that back seat Yeah, as I suspected, thanks to that tall roof, there is a ton of room back here, even with that sunroof, which by the way, does make it much brighter back here. Lots of headroom, lots of legroom, even though this front seat is quite far back on its rails to accommodate me and my long legs. My knees back here aren't jammed up against the seat back, which I like. Nice armrest here with flush mounted cup holders. So if you're not using them for a drink, you can rest your arm more comfortably on there, which I like really really nice yeah no heated seats which i guess now that i'm sat back here and realize that you could essentially put adults or bigger kids back here more regularly yeah you might miss heated seats a little bit more i don't know but i do have a usb-c port which is great so at least they'll be entertained however this is still overall a pretty small footprint so they had to find this space somewhere they use all this room for the rear kind of uh, cabin area the rear cargo area is not huge as a result um it's also not a power lift gate either. It's only a manual one. You can't even get it as, as a power lift gate. It doesn't bother me so much. I find it faster sometimes to be able to just open it and close it, swing it open and close on my own. But I suspect most people would like to at least have the power lift gate option. More bothersome to me is that there's no under floor storage back there. Yeah, there's a few small bins or, or on either side of the full size spare tire, but it's not a lot. So storage is at a bit of a premium when it comes to the back. However, you can, of course, fold these seats nice and flat. There you go. And while it is technically a 60 40 split, you can flip this door down here. So you've got a pass through door. So if you want to store longer items without sacrificing an entire outboard seat, you can do that. And I like that. Yes, as mentioned before, this is the all wheel drive model. You can also get the front wheel drive model. And since this is all wheel drive, it means I've got a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission here, as opposed to the eight speed auto, which is in the front wheel drive car. And here I've got a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, same one you find the Jetta. And here it's good for 158 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. And unlike the transmission, 
that 1.5 liter four cylinder is the only motor you can get with the Taos. And already that presents a bit of a problem. That means that this Taos has less power than pretty much all of its biggest competition. The Kia Seltos, the Mazda CX-30 GT, the Subaru Crosstrek, the recently announced, recently released, sorry, Toyota Corolla Cross even has more horsepower than this does, so does the Jeep Compass, and they all do it for less money than this top trim version, the Highline version costs. This is about $38,000 for this. They all make more horsepower than this does. So that, you might think that already starts this one on kind of on its back foot a bit, but this makes more torque than a lot of that competition. The only one of all those ones I mentioned that makes more torque, maybe there's two, I think maybe the, yes, I think the Kia Seltos and the CX-30 in turbo mode, a turbo version, they make more torque than this does. But, so it does have a bit of a trick of sleeve, that, a couple of tricks up its sleeve. That's one second one is that dual clutch transmission, which we're going to revisit later on. So in addition to some pretty cool interior style, it's got some cool exterior styling as well. It does this Taos, starts with that color, which is called corn flower blue now. I don't know what a corn flower is. All I know is that it looks good and happens to match my jacket. So thank you for that VW. The last time I tested a VW was a GTI and it was also finished in corn flower blue. Looked good there, looks good here too. The styling might not be quite as in your face as it is on like a Kia Seltos, which has those kind of dual tier headlights, sort of is pretty wild looking. But this has some distinctive features of its own. The head and tail lights are both of the LED variety that's standard across the board. But up here, I've got what's called IQ headlights, which means they're basically adaptive. When you turn, they turn with you, which is nice. And there's a little light show when you start the engine up to show you that they're working. Uh, they're also connected by like a little thin light bar. Not so easy to see during the day, but looks very cool at night, which is a design feature that um, I think is a really nice touch. The proportions are really quite spot on. I love this hood, which is given some kind of creases to make it look chisel without being too loud about it. It's quite strong, purposeful looking. I've got 19 inch wheels on this. They're a, a 19 inch uh, two-tone wheel, which looks rather good. That's a $500 option, one of the only options you can get at Highline level. And my friends over at Motormelt, Zach and Andrea, they, they said that they look like something from a Hot Wheels car, which kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because I collect Hot Wheels. What's wrong if the wheels on my car look like the wheels on a little Hot Wheels die cast? But I think what they were really saying is it'd be nice if there was some more choice at this level. There's the one style and that's it. 17s are standard and there's also an 18 inch wheel option as well. There's some nice little chrome bits all around it, around the windows, on the roof rails. There's big tau scripting across the rear tailgate and that's kind of something that's become a la mode in the crossover and SUV world these days. But VW was one of the first to do it. Overall, it's just a really nice, purposeful styling package that's distinctive without being too loud about it, and I like that. We're starting off our drive in the city here, and already, it's great. Um, great view out and very darty, short wheelbase, really easy to kind of weave in and out of traffic, which is a really important aspect of vehicles in this segment. They spend a lot of time in cities and people, they, they don't want to have to think about blind spots, all that kind of stuff when they're driving the city. So keep it as kind of uh, open as possible. And they've done well here to do that. The windows uh, on the back are a little smaller than something you might see in like a Subaru Forester or a Kia Seltos. They don't infringe too much on your over the shoulder view, but there is a little bit there. Otherwise though, it's great in town. Very little overhang, so a nice tight turning radius. So parallel parking, moving around parkings, all that kind of stuff. No problem. No problem at all in this. And that's going to be something that people are going to feel as soon as they start test driving this vehicle. They'll be able to tell right away. Having said that, though, while I do like how punchy this is with this dual clutch transmission I've got, um, you're going to probably get smoother progress in the city with the 8-speed auto. They are just naturally smoother operating transmissions are, 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 are traditional autos than dual clutch. Dual clutches are made to be a more performance-oriented kind of piece. That's the point. And VW will tell you that the all-wheel drive version with its dual clutch transmission, it's kind of the sportier version of this Taos. But around town, there is a little bit of lurchiness, a little bit tougher to creep forward slowly with the dual clutch just a little bit but enough that um, I think people who are really 
um, going to be spending more time in the city. Uh, they're going to want to have a have a look maybe at the, the uh, at an eight speed equipped model as well. So while yes, the dual clutch auto might cause a few I don't know hiccups in town. When you activate sport mode here and you're out in the open road and you plan it, that is pretty darn quick. Yes, it only it has less than 160 horsepower. I get that. But it's got a lot of torque and it's got that dual clutch and when those two kind of, when the lines cross, I guess, when the powertrain gets all in alignment, the forward progress is just fine in this vehicle. There is not, it's not like you feel like you're wanting for power. I'm climbing a hill right now and it doesn't really seem to be stressing this vehicle out at all. I I think it's great. Yes, the Seltos does definitely feels faster. So does the CX-30. The CX-30 feels faster than pretty much anything out there right now in this segment. But this is, this is really quite, quite good for the, the size of the engine. And, and, the, and what it says on paper. Really that torque kind of helps get a bridge the gap there, the horsepower gap. And plus you've got that, dual, that great dual clutch, which if you knock it down to sport mode by just tapping the gear lever back like is Volkswagen style, you really get going. And of course you can shift it manually too if you want. I don't have paddle shifters though, which I guess is somewhat disappointing. Um, Normally, that's not something I would really take issue with in a crossover, but since this is a crossover that, I, as we've talked a few times about, is, is, is kind of stepping in for some much-loved sporty hatchbacks, uh, I think some paddles might have been appreciated by a lot of potential buyers of this Taos here, um, so I kind of do, do miss that. But the, the power shifters don't really change all that much, though, is the handling. And the handling, especially this all-wheel drive model, is really really good it's on point great weight to the steering feels very solid not a lot of not a lot of vibration or rattling through the steering wheel here which is a sign of quality in my book brakes are responsive and the left right transitions you go through here they are very very uneventful and that's a good thing when you're in a crossover like this you want to feel stable and planted and you do in the towels around town that steering rack helps you kind of squirt in between traffic out on the highway like this it gives you the confidence you need um, to 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 carry on at speed which is which is which is great um <laughs> driving this thing is fun you really feel like you can be a bit of a hooligan in this vehicle you can sense some of that gti dna in here um uh, which is which is nice, and you've got, of course, in this particular model, the benefit of all-wheel drive, which is good for handling in slippery, adverse conditions, but also helps when it comes to handling turns and stuff in dry conditions as well. It just makes for more stability, and that is an important an important aspect, not just in crossovers in any car, but but this is. Uh, this is a fun. It's a fun drive. It's a fun driving car. Uh, for, for the power you get on paper, there's lots to like here. VW knows what's made its car so appealing over the years. Obviously, over the many, many, many years they've been making cars, they know and they and they're very good at keeping those those kind of those kind of um, those waypoints, if you will, in their vehicles, and that includes this all new Taos here as well. Darn, what a fun drive, man, what a fun drive. And of course, being a VW, they've got the ride down too. It's not harsh over bumps, it's controlled, even though it's a firm setup that helps reduce body roll as you go through turns, it's not a, a spine, a spine rattling roll or a teeth rattling um, drive, I should say when you start hitting the bumps. It's well insulated for that. It's a bit loud in the cockpit, but otherwise the ride is very, very good. And that coupled with the solidity of the steering rack and all that stuff makes for a ride that feels of a higher echelon 
than what this vehicle competes in the kind of mainstream compact or subcompact crossover segments. Very much like the Mazda CX-5 in that way, which is not technically a luxury vehicle, but as you get to the higher trims in the CX-5, it, it is very luxurious because it has to be because Mazda doesn't have a luxury line to compete with the likes of Acura and Infiniti and Audi and so on. Uh, speaking of Audi, yes, if you do your math, you'll realize that you can get into an Audi Q3 for only about a thousand bucks more than this vehicle, than this trim of this vehicle here. But if you wanna add a lot of the pieces that most buyers are gonna to wanna to add to their Q3, it's gonna take you to another two or three grand above all that. So, yes, some people might go, well, this Volkswagen is priced perilously close to its luxury counterpart. Maybe, but it's roomier in here, and I think this is, this is a better looking vehicle than the Q3 is as well. And in this top trim, I've got real leather seating and all that kind of stuff, um, which is nice, which the Audi also has. So, I don't know, like, I wouldn't say just because there isn't a $10,000 gap between the two, which never happened because that would be a quarter of the price of this entire car. But um, it, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't mean you have to automatically default to the luxury version uh, instead of this one here. This has its own qualities uh, that make it worthwhile. One of which is the fact that $1,000 or no, it's still less less of a cost of entry than the Audi. It's more of a cost of entry, though, as we talked about before, than a lot of the competition. The price is going to be a, a, a bit of a stumbling block, I think, for a lot of people. Of course, you can get into this car for closer to 26, 27,000 for the front wheel drive version. So there is that. The cost of entry at the base level is not, is not killer, but this level gets a little on the high side. That being said, though, the high line is not going to be the, um, the popular kind of mass seller for this house that's going to be the mid-level comfort line for sure that's what people most people are going to be buying anyway and that can be had for closer to the thirty-five thousand or a little, uh, a little bit less i think range um, i'll put the exact pricing up here but um pardon me if i got that wrong but um that's going to be the one most people are going to be going for i think and that and, but, but with that comfort line you still get the very cool looks you still get all that room inside synthetic leather seating fine but it's still a leather of sorts and you know apple carplay all that kind of stuff heated front seats i think too uh so that is to be the, the, the real volume seller for this it's not going to be this highline one but the highline one does look cool and um that might attract a lot of people as well but the bottom line is this, this is a great car it handles well drives well the power is fine you, you don't need more some might think it's nice to have more you don't need more power is fine great back seat space cool features cool looks and, and just the overall general vw feel which is all which has always been a more luxurious feel for a non-luxury car which is awesome i'm a big fan of that and, I, and it's carried over to this new towel said this has done a good job it's taken on the challenge, the real challenge of trying to make people forget about the Golf and Golf Sport Wagon, and it's done a pretty good job of that. I'd, I'd be interested to see if they ever do something a little more high performance for this model. That'd be cool. A GTI version of the Taos. Who knows? Stranger things, right? But for now, it's done a really good job of picking up that slack. It's not going die hard, died in the wool, blah, blah, blah. VW Golf fans aren't going to be easily swayed still even by this very good Taos but a larger percentage of the buying population I think is going to love this vehicle and they should it's a really good car it's got a lot of good stuff going for it and uh, I'm a big fan thank you for watching this review of the 2022 Volkswagen Taos 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 whatever I uh, hope you enjoyed if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do if not no hard feelings, of course. You can follow me on Twitter at Dan the Wheelman and on Instagram at Dan the Wheelman as well. So thanks for tuning into this video. Until next time, sign our folks and go Canada, go.